Good afternoon. It's Tom again for another Thrill Pack video update. Hey everybody. I've got a couple things that uh, might, may interest you today. It's, it's very busy around fire administration as you can imagine. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of projects going on. I thought I'd bring, bring everybody up to speed on what we've got going on right now. First and foremost, uh, Chief Tony Krause is retiring after a lot of years. You guys know, uh, know Chief Krause, been, been a good friend of mine since he started here, since we both started, so known him. Anyway, his uh, retirement celebration is going to be on the September 17th from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. It's a drop-in thing, so please come by and say hello to him. It's uh, going to be down at the uh, training facility down there uh, near Logistics. So. Uh, look forward to that. Hate to see him go, though. Also, I'd like to uh, remind everybody that Monday the 24th starts the School Zone Safety Awareness Program. So uh, even though that's Monday, C-Shift, if you think about it, B-Shift's working on Sunday, so they're going to get the first, the first day there at the different school zones. So be ready to do that. We want to make sure our kids are all safe uh, going to school at those school, school bus zones and everything like that in our zone. So that's coming up. Uh, Good news on the ESCI report. I uh, want to make sure everybody's aware of this. I, I briefed you in the last couple of videos regarding the complexity of that uh, ESCI report and, and what our status was in getting done. Uh, I would remind you that it came in the form of 79 recommendations under that composed 24 key findings. And I can report today that um, everything has been addressed that we were going, that we could address. I mean, and I'll explain a little bit later, but of course we're not going to build a, you know, state-of-the-art huge training center in 12 months from uh, from the time we got the report. So, of course, we haven't done that stuff. But all the other components, all most of the 79, if not all of them, uh, other than some of those big ticket, the high ticket items ha have been addressed and are in uh, for final review right now, uh, pending their, uh, the ESCI is coming back on October the 7th. So we'll have uh, everything done and, and, and compiled in a book and everything for them to review what we've done uh, relative to their recommendations. Now, uh, some other stuff that I'd like to keep get everybody up to speed on, you guys know the Tower 33, you may or may not know the Tower 33 deal. What that is, Tower 33 is now the special ops uh, for that battalion. Now how that occurred is that uh, Engine 41 crew that was at 41 was moved up to 38 to become engine 38 and the squad 38 crew the special ops were moved over to tower 33 to be to make that the special ops uh, truck for that area now the chief would remind me to tell you guys that that's a under a 90-day trial period right now but it looks good so far but it is uh, under will be under review for uh, after 98 uh, 90 days and going with that uh, engine 41, the engine is now become engine 14 at, at Nowcrest. So that's, that's what's going on up there. <clears throat> I thought I'd bring you up to speed also on some of the station construction items. As you know, I've been talking a lot about the four stations that were planned going in first. We, I'll call those group one stations. Those are the, those are the ones that are uh, approved and funded by the BOCC. Kathleen Station is starting construction this week, maybe even today. That's at the corner of Catherine Drive and Kathleen Road. So that should be coming out of the ground any day now. The Nowcrest station was moved from Group 1 to Group 2 uh, because of some mitigation of the sand skinks there. Uh, they had to move that to Group 2. Uh, and what we did was they moved station at corner Galloway Road and Sutton Road, got moved up into Group 1. So that's kind of that Winston Creek area. Um, so that got moved up in there. And as you recall, the other two remaining stations are Lofman and Frostproof. All those Group 1 stations, the uh, Sutton Road, the Kathleen, Frostproof, Lofman, are scheduled to be completed by December of 2021. Now, now let's talk about Group 2. Group 2 are the stations that are not uh, currently, uh, th they're pending funding by the BOCC. They haven't been voted on yet, but they've been, they're pending funding. One of those, uh, the BOCC has authorized us to start acquiring land for the station that's going between Sun Air and Sand Hill. And that is uh, going to, we're going to build a station there to consolidate 13 and 40. 
Also, they're in the process of purchasing uh, property on Masterpiece Road near or at Big Tank Road to relocate Station 44. Now, those are both in the Group 2 project list. So that's, but they are, they are moving forward with acquiring the land for that. But again, the stations have not been a, approved yet uh, by funding by the BOCC. Also, um, the county manager, county management uh, is beginning the discussions to, um, on a future state-of-the-art training center for Polk County Fire Rescue. And I'm sure it's going to incorporate our neighbors and, and, and uh, other fire rescue organizations, more of a regional training site. But that was one of the heavy recommendations in the ESCI report. And again, the, uh, we've done some initial looking at some of the other places and, and you're, you're talking in between 10 to 20 million dollars for some of these training facilities. So this is not going to be anything very quick but they are talking about it uh, and the, the, they're starting to look into it. So it is rising up on the, on the list, but it's, again, we're, we're years away from something like that, but at least it's uh, being talked about right now. And the last thing I want to bring everybody up to speed on is uh, that the county is uh, releasing an RFP to replace all of the cardiac monitors within the fleet. And as everyone knows here, um, if you're a paramedic or, or if you're in the budget process or anything, those are not inexpensive items. They're anywhere from twenty-five dollars to $30,000 each, depending upon features and things like that. So there's an RFP going out right now, should be back in uh, the selection process in about three months maybe to figure out uh, what the best one is out there for, for our folks to use. But again, replacing all the cardiac monitors. RFP, uh, a lot of high dollars going out there, but again, the, I cannot stress enough the, the support that we have from the Board of County Commissioners and the County Manager's Office to, uh, to keep our equipment up to date, keep our facilities up to date, our, our uh, vehicles. So uh, a big commitment on their part, and uh, we just we need to be aware of that. These, are, these things do not come cheap, as, as you can imagine. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, uh, stay tuned. I'll, I'll keep you up to date when I got some more uh, information for us for as regarding some of our projects. Anyway, be safe.